this this project uh, uh, was initiated as a building bond construction project for Hood River County School District. Uh, it, we had projects at all of the campuses within our school district, and one day, I remember it quite well, uh, we were walking with the architecture firm, Opsis Architecture, and um, they were talking to, to me and also Michael Becker, who was with us, as we were walking around the campus about uh, wanting to do some sort of demonstration project around environmental construction and design. And um, they found the right place. Uh, we were very interested in doing something like that. Um, and that's really what sparked the entire lead building process here at Hood River Middle School is that, is that day and all of our interests converging together to build something really special for the kids. Well, I think the, the best example of involving the kids is we had a, what was called an eco charrette, which was a new term for me, um, but we had a collection of professionals uh, in the design and engineering field. We had environmental engineers, we had architects, uh, civil engineers, landscape designers, um, we had school people like myself, a school board member, and then we had kids, and the kids contributed quite a bit. Um, so we talked about how the building would be used and what features would uh, the kids uh, uh, get to um, best benefit from for their education. There's one. But really the, the driver through it was the idea about education. What became clear to us early in that charrette and as we started to work with the um, with the instructors at the school and started to think about it, uh, one of the things that drove us toward the net zero was the idea about the simplicity of that is the building is a teaching tool. And what I mean there is that it's easy to say, okay, and demonstrate, uh, have a meter on the wall and say this building's only using, uh, you know, 70% or 60% of what a normal building would uh, use. Um, uh, but what does that mean to a middle school student? They look at it and say 60% of what, and we're talking about BTUs and kilo BTUs and BTU hours. They're all learning those things, but they're, they're hard to grasp. They're hard to say uh, what, they're hard for anybody to grasp as to what that energy use actually equates to. And so when we talked about net zero and said, we can do a building that uses no energy uh, averaged over a year, and importantly, it's heavily dependent on how the students and occupants of the building use it. If they leave the doors open uh, in the middle of the winter and all the heat escapes, uh, if they leave all, all their computers and lights turned on, um, if they don't use it properly, then it won't be net zero. So that set up a challenge, and it was what I call the challenge with the real finish line. Uh, the school is a teaching tool credit um, was actually more based on uh, the school's curriculum. Uh, and they had already set up their curriculum prior to this project even starting uh, in terms of having a, uh, you know, talking about natural systems and, and human systems and how they, uh, how they integrate with the, a built, with the built environment. And so I, it was pretty easy for them to, to use our building to uh, incorporate into that. I think there were 10 hours per semester that were required uh, to get that credit. And, One of my things I've been thinking a lot about lately that you know how do you how do you know if you're doing things right and uh, the guy that started permaculture Bill Mollison he, he talks about you know you're doing it right if resources are gathering around you you know and so uh, resources being excitement and learning and excited parents and and funds showing up and productivity in the garden I, mean, I, I think that Something must be happening, right? Because there's a lot going on here.